Welcome back to the Card Anthology series. It's been far too long. My name is John Dunning, host of MTG The Hive Mind and 10 Street Hooligans on the They Said We Said YouTube channel. Thank you again, Coach, for allowing me to return. Planeswalkers, let's talk Time Spiral. Released on October 6th of the year 2006, Wizards of the Coast released the 40th expansion to the Magic the Gathering trading card game, the epic and wondrous set known as Time Spiral. Time Spiral was a nostalgia set where the main focus was bringing to light things that have happened in Magic's past. This was a set consisting of 422 cards, with 121 of those cards being dubbed Time Shifted cards, or cards that were reprinted in a slightly different way to emulate the feel of the old days of Magic. All of the Time Shifted cards were pre-Mirrodin reprints, which also featured the style of 7th edition in terms of the card frame, and were even given a purple rendition of the set symbol, which was the Hourglass. All in all, the main theme was to focus on the past, but with the set symbol being an Hourglass, the set also emphasized that time was running out. Time Spiral was sold in 15 card booster packs, fat packs, 70 card tournament decks, along with 4 pre-constructed decks, which were called Fun with Fungus, Hopes Crusaders, Reality Fracture, and Sliver Evolution. Booster packs also had cards that had a different amount of card rarities, which had not been seen since the set Alliances. Each booster pack of Time Spiral had 10 commons, 3 uncommons, 1 rare, with one time-shifted rare card as well. The storyline of the expansion was the story of the plane of Dominaria in Ruin. It had been over 200 years since the Phyrexian invasion, but the plane itself has been degrading over the years. Trees, air, and other life forms have been suffering from these ill after effects. On top of that, time itself has been increasingly unstable, making things from the past appear and disappear at will, along with mana slowly being taken away from the plane itself. This would lead to the character Teferi seeking out help to heal the plane before it is too late. This storyline is depicted in Scott Mago's magic novel of the same name, which was also released around the same time as the expansion. Since Time Spiral's focus is the past, many mechanics were brought back into this set. For instance, the mechanics of Shadow and Buyback were originally introduced in Tempest early on in Magic's history. There were also multiple other mechanics such as Echo, Flinking, Morph, Madness, Flashback, and even Storm that made appearances in this block as well. However, three new mechanics were introduced at this point in time. The first new mechanic was Suspend, which sends a spell into the future by paying a reduced cost and waiting a number of turns before casting it for free. An example of this particular mechanic could be seen in the white-blue creature card Ith High Arcanist. The second new mechanic was Split Second, which freezes time for a moment, preventing spells and abilities from being played while a spell with Split Second is on the stack. An example of this mechanic overall can be seen in the black instant card Sudden Death. The last mechanic was Flash, which slows down time for the mage, allowing a non-instant spell to be cast at instant speed. Flash has since become an evergreen keyword and has been since been seen sporadically over the course of recent sets. An example of this mechanic can be seen on the green creature card Ashcoat Bear. This expansion had a total of 20 cycles of cards in the entire set, which is quite a bit more than the typical expansion set. Cycles of cards included split second spells at all different levels of rarity, suspend spells in both creature and non-creature form, a flash cycle, a flash back cycle, a buyback cycle, along with a cycle called totems, the rancor-like aura spells, and even five cycles of sliver creatures, just to name a few. There was the magi cycle, which were wizard creatures that had an effect related to magic's past. The cycle of cards included the white magus of the disc, an emulation of Nevenral's disc, Magus of the Jar, which mimicked the card Memory Jar, Magus of the Mirror, which played almost like the card Mirror Universe, along with Magus of the Scroll and Magus of the Candelabra, which mimicked Curse Scroll and Candelabra of Thanos, respectively. There were the Storage Lands, which were uncommon two-color lands that could store leftover mana and be used on other turns. The Storage Lands included Calciform Pools, Dreadship Reef, Molten Slag Heap, Fungal Reaches, with the last storage land being Salt Crusted Steep. There were the two color legendary creatures, which were creatures that represented part of Magic's past storylines. 
These legendary creatures consisted of Ith High Arcanist, Dralnu, Lich Lord, Karvik the Merciless, Stonebrow, Krosian Hero, with the last of these legendary creatures being Safi Eric's Daughter, my personal favorite. The last of the cycle cards in Time Spiral were the uncommon Main Phase Matter instance, which were cards that had an improved effect when the spell is cast during the card owner's Main Phase. This cycle of cards included the white Return to Dust, the blue Careful Consideration, the black Haunting Him, the red Sulfurous Blast, with the last cycle card being the green Might of Old Corrosia. Time Spiral had a set of notable cards that were included with the expansion. The first card was the Red Sorcery Dragonstorm, which was a card that helped fuel the deck type of the same name. The card enabled you to get any dragon permanent from your deck and put it onto the battlefield. This was a card that with a combination of a couple of other cards could get out four Bogarden Hellkites by abusing the storm mechanic and deal 20 points of damage to an opposing player, usually by turn four or five. Smallpox was a black sorcery card that made each player lose one life, discard one card, sacrifice one creature, and sacrifice one land. This was used in tempo rack strategies and dual colored decks that would make the opponent lose multiple resources at once and was usually played after turn 3 or 4 to maximize the effect of the card. I have personally made many people flip a table due to this card while playing 8 rack. Next was Greater Gargadon. This was a 9-7 red creature with suspend 10, but could also have some of its suspend counters removed if certain permanents were sacrificed. This card was used as pretty good size threat for red players as they can get a massive creature out. Greater Gargadon was seen mostly in aggro red and mono red along with the Revel Arc strategies between 2007 and 2008. Living End was a black sorcery card with Suspend 3, which made creatures get removed from the graveyards and have other creatures enter the battlefield. During the period where Time Spiral was in standard, Living End was hardly used. However, it would not become a powerful card until around 2010 when the mechanic Cascade was introduced. Living End would end up comboing with this particular mechanic to make it extremely effective and very potent and would see much more play in the 2010s. After that was Lotus Bloom, which was an artifact with Suspend 3 that was basically a delayed version of the Black Lotus from the very first Magic the Gathering set. Lotus Bloom was used in many ramp strategies, but it was also used in combination with the Dragonstorm card previously mentioned to get out very big and effective creatures early on in the game. Besides being part of many Dragonstorm decks, Lotus Bloom has also been involved with strategies such as TEPS and Ad Nauseam in Extended and later on in the modern format. Dread Return was a black sorcery card that was able to return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. This card was widely used in many reanimator strategies as a way to cheat in very powerful creatures such as Grizzlebrand. Dread Return had also been part of many Icarid, Dredge, and even Cephalid Breakfast decks, mostly in the late 2000s and early 2010s. There was the creature card to Fairy, Mage of Zalfir, that gave creatures flash and forced your opponent to play only during their main phases. Overall, this card was used to slow down opposing players and was a great card against other control decks as well. It saw a vast amount of tournament play as it was also used in combination with the card Mystical Teachings, which was also from the same set. Empty the Warrens was a red sorcery card that created two 1-1 goblin tokens and also has the storm mechanic. This card was used by the red and aggro players mostly as an alternative win condition whenever the player could not target their opponent. Empty the Warrens has been used in a multitude of different Storm decks and has had success as recently as 2018 where it helped win the modern team Ixalan for GP Madrid. There was Academy Ruins which was a legendary land card that can add one generic mana along with having the ability to return artifact cards to the top of your library. It was seen in the tournament setting for not only its multi-purpose function, but to be used efficiently with certain artifact cards. One card that this card was used with was the artifact card Mindslaver, in order to repeatedly take over the opposing player's turn. Academy Ruins has also been used in other lock decks, along with being seen in a large amount of Lantern Control decks in the later part of the 2010s. Ancestral Vision was a blue spell that had Suspend 4 and was essentially a delayed version of the Alpha card Ancestral Recall, which allows a target player to draw 3 cards. Cheap card draw is always sought out for most players and Ancestral Vision was no exception. 
This card in its early print was used widely in fairy decks for the standard format, but also has been used in other decks such as Shardless Bug and Blue White Control. On top of that, it is also used in many commander decks as a very efficient way to get more cards. The card Crosian Grip was a green instant spell that has the split second mechanic along with the effect of destroying a target, artifact, or enchantment. It was included in many tournament decks as a sideboard staple for taking out numerous cards such as Vidalcan Shackles and Counterbalance that were present in blue decks. Corrosion Grip has been seen in Elves, Madness, Scapeshift, and other deck types such as Lands and is also one of the few cards that can help with combating the Affinity Arctic. Tormod's Crypt was an artifact that could be sacrificed to have all cards from player's graveyard be exiled. Mainly used as a cyborg card, like a few other notable cards, Tormod's Crypt was used to combat deck styles such as Reanimator and other decks that use the graveyard as part of the deck strategy. Overall, this card was not only cheap to play, but was also very efficient for doing a specific job. Tormod's Crypt has been seen in many different deck types such as Affinity, Zoo, Tron, and even aggro decks, and has been seen in recent deck styles such as Ravager's Shop. The last notable card on this list is the card Ancient Grudge. This was a red instant card that destroyed a target artifact along with having a cheap flashback cost. Similar to Crosian Grip, this was highly efficient at taking out artifact cards and was another card that worked well against the Affinity deck style. Ancient Grudge was also seen in a vast number of different decks such as Jund, Eldrazi Aggro, Burn, Valakut, and even other Affinity decks as well. It still sees play to this day as it has been seen in deck styles such as Dredge and Tron. A sealed booster box of Time Spiral is currently going for around $600. So that is it for this episode of Card Anthology. I hope everyone enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to leave a like and a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the Card Bazaar for more Magic the Gathering videos. If you would also like to contribute to the channel in other ways, head on over to the Patreon page by clicking on the link to the description and become a patron to start receiving rewards today. If you missed the last episode of Card Anthology, which went over the set Cold Snap, be sure to check that out after watching this video. Again, I want to thank Coach for allowing me to jump on and bring you all the information for Time Spiral. My name is John Dunning, host of MTG The Hive Mine and 10 Street Hooligans on the They Said We Said YouTube channel, and I'll see you all in the multiverse.